Welcome to the Jay Tyner Show, where we discuss all things wealth management and retirement planning. And as always, the goal of our team here at Semax Financial Group is to help you focus more on your life and less on your money. Now, as a reminder, check with your current advisor, planner, CPA, and read our disclosure in the video description below. Subscribe to this channel if you want to stay up to date on all of our new content. And by the way, if you have questions or need a 15-minute free consultation, please visit Semax.com or call 336-856-0080. Hello and welcome to the Jay Tyner Show. I'm Jeffrey Griffin along with Jay Tyner and Matt Landon where we discuss all things wealth management and retirement planning. Gentlemen, right off the bat, I'm an emotional guy. 10 destructive behaviors of emotional <laughs> investors. I have to guard against this. So, Jay, I don't want to spend a lot of time thinking about it. I just want to decide and get on. Okay. Good or bad idea? Well, I think that um, we, we don't want to make hasty decisions when we're talking about our investments. It's, that's, that's been one of the key things, I think, that have, has been a, uh, a support in those that make wise decisions financially is don't be hasty. So, right. And you know. then, Matt, sometimes, you know, I come home and I go, the world's just crazy. And I kind of lose my perspective. And how does that how does that play a part? Yeah, I would say market volatility can definitely cause you to get emotional. And the moment you get emotional, you stop losing that rational thought. And and it's really key to uh, hold that down. Try, try and keep that as little to as possible. So, Jay, see the big picture rather than just, I want to be satisfied, instant gratification. I want to do it now, now, now. How do well, you step past that? I, I don't know about that, but we, we like that instant feedback. Okay, so if you're trading and you got your computer pulled up and you're watching it or you're watching the, you know, the news and you're seeing this the the, the symbol going up and down, you know, that's that instant gratification. We kind of it's almost a little drug feel, you know. You get you get pulled into that. You and put we, it in, you see a green, and you just yeah yeah. So do more yeah, of that. Be, well, be careful, <laughs> be careful on that. So yeah. well, Matt, did, do you have a crystal ball? I mean, no, and and I think the thing there is when when there's that uncertainty, when you don't have that crystal ball, right? right? We all kind of crave certainty. We want to know the outcomes, and so what happens is we end up falling into this trap where you fall in with the illusion of certainty with some of these market predictions and these these technical analysis that say, well, if the chart did this, then it must mean. Doesn't always mean that. And then if I get excited or nervous, I want to touch. All the pieces of paper and do all the keyboard clicks myself and jay i just want to be in charge of everything does that work well again i think we're talking about what the emotional advisor does what his daily you know what he does during each and every day and so that is micromanagement we call mm -hmm. that and when you micromanage uh, that's not good as well in investing it, it can really backfire on you so yeah i would i would say it makes us feel like we're in control and folks we're not in control of anything okay ver be honest right I, I, <laughs> guilty we, guilty we can steer we can project uh, project we can direct but when it comes right down to it we're not in control okay and so matt that another option i'll just watch the news and make all my decisions from there and go <laughs> yeah i think there's two things around that one the media has a tendency to focus on the negative right so, mm -hmm. so you're get, you're gonna get some negative feedback a lot that's what that's what drives attention and the other thing there is it's short term it's very quick it's what immediately happened you can you can have a lot of noise and it it becomes difficult to filter out that big picture when you're so focused on the immediate Right. So I think it's it's not I'm not trying to beat on the news too badly, but I think it is key to when you're looking at it, be aware and be conscious of is this just noise? Is this just something to generate attention or is this something meaningful that actually requires action? Well, I've heard you and I respect it, but I'm a great investor. I read some stuff online. I know what I'm doing. Yeah, I think as a general rule, the emotional investor thinks they're probably a better investor than what they really are, <laughs> Jeffrey. So I'll, I'll just hit you too. between the I, eyes I know, on that one. <laughs> I know. So I, I'll get right back to you, Matt. How do you, where's your anchor in all of this? Well, I think oftentimes our investments, they're influenced by kind of reference points. Part is like our, our previous profit or loss or, or things like our investment and, and past performance. But I think sometimes people get so hung up on previous performance, they don't really look at the future performance and kind of the future projections. So you have to be careful about not weighing too too heavily on one side. Um, I, I actually know someone personally who uh, they, they took $6,000. They had a bunch of penny stocks. And I asked him how he was doing. And he told me, well, I turned it into $10,000. And I was like, that is fantastic. And I said, and he was like, that was just a couple weeks ago. And I was like, great. I said, well, where are you at now? You said that was a couple weeks ago. And he looked at me like, well, 
um, I, I started getting behind, and I said, well, where are you at now? And he said, I have $4,000 in my account. <laughs> I, I, that's behind. So depending on what, what past performance are we talking about here, right? That's right. Well, you, you mentioned the loss, Jay. I don't like to lose. Yeah, and that could be another emotional driver for folks where um, they're fearful of losing. They don't want to lose, and so they'll make a, an incorrect decision or make an emotional decision. I know if you think back not too long ago, we had a big market correction, and it made the big V, came all the way out, um, went back up, and folks made probably more money that stayed with it made more money than they've ever made in their in their portfolios whereas those that wanted to avoid losses give me out give me out well they lost all that opportunity they sold on the way down so again emotional decisions i think a good advisor a good res- a good advisor could be a good resource to help folks not make so many emotional decisions that can hurt them well matt is the way i see everything is that the only way or should i be asking well, for I, help or? I, I think our perceptions can be faulty you know uh for example we have my wife and i we have a foreign exchange student living with us and uh she's on she's on a certain hola yeah buenos dias <laughs> she, she's on a certain app all the time and if i was just looking at her and and the kids at her high school i might think well we need to invest in that app this company is <laughs> that is the one it's going to the moon that is not how you need to make your investment decisions right you, you need to be looking at the, the you need to be looking at the fundamentals you need to be looking at a little bit more broadly than just purely that gut check and, and thinking, well, what are the teenagers doing now, right? It, it, it's a little bit more nuanced than so that. So we've identified the 10, or I don't know if it's just the 10, but 10 destructive behaviors. But then is there a, is there a remedy? Is there a prescription for it? Well, I think the the, the first step is admitting you have a problem, right? But but uh, no, I think the first step is just realizing. Hi, my name and, is. And, and, <laughs> exactly. Like, hello, everyone. I'm an investor. Yeah. No, <laughs> I think where you start is just recognize and understand these potential pitfalls, right? The moment you, you realize, okay, this is a potential issue, it, it starts to draw your attention to it and you get to feel, okay, am I making an emotional decision here? Or am I am I following my procedure? Am I following the thought process and, and, and have this lined out? But Jay, is there should I be worried? Should I be afraid? I mean, can you send me in the right direction? Well, I would say that we can learn from our mistakes. Um, and if uh, you know, we can look back and see those mistakes. But if you see those and don't make any changes, then that doesn't help. So I think process is really a, a good word to use here. If you are for example, day trading, and I'm not saying you should, I'm just saying if you were, a, what makes a good day trader is they follow a very strict process. They do the same thing every time and they never vary from it. And I, I would say uh, sticking with a sound process in your trading uh, and never to violate that, even through wins and even through losses is stick with that strong process and Matt, that one, works for you. one so. bit of parting uh, advice? Well, I would just say this. I'm going to reiterate something that Jay actually said a few moments ago, which is that if, if you don't have one, seek the guidance of a financial advisor or, or some kind of a, a guide, if you will. And the reason for that is oftentimes your financial advisor is as much a behavioral coach as anything else. When you think advisor, you're, you're looking for someone's advice. You're looking for someone's guidance. And it's not always buy this, sell that. It is how do we approach the situation? How do you feel? Are we making sure we're in the right tolerance? Because I think that's a big part of it is if, if you've got that appropriate tolerance built out, then you, you'll be able to ride through things a little bit more comfortably let me, than let me if you're on your own. One little comment. When you come in and you sit down with an advisor, what we found is that when that that family, that gentleman or that wife comes in and starts talking about the financial planning side of things, it gets morphed into what the real issue is. And they never knew what the real issue was. You just had right. a gentleman that came in and it was about you know the buying and the selling and the family involved. And it morphed into basically quality of life. Right? Absolutely. It, it was a completely different subject that came out out of that meeting, that initial meeting with an advisor. Yeah. I think that sometimes when you when you go to the doctor and you complain, so I'm a runner, I love to run, and I'll go to the doctor and I'll go, hey, my knee is killing me. And he goes, oh, there's nothing wrong with your knee. It's actually your, your, your muscles that are in your thigh that are too tight. That's what's pulling your knee out. Your knee's fine. That's not your problem. But you went to somebody that maybe knew a little more than you knew about it. That's exactly right. And what I hear what I hear you saying time and time again is create a plan and stick with it. That's true. So that's, uh, we hope, is a little bit of help. You can subscribe to our channel, Simex Financial Group, if you have questions or would like to learn more. The phone number, 336-856-0080. For Matt Landon and Jay Tyner, 
and The Jay Tyner Show. I'm Jeffrey Griffin. Thanks for watching, and see you next time. Thank you.